We had a ball at the California RV show, and one of the questions we asked everybody was, what does the RV lifestyle mean to you? So we thought we might as well roll the camera and share it all with you and make it our interview of the week. So we spent several hours each day doing meet and greets, getting the chance to talk to the people who uh, came by to say hello, and it was so much fun. It really is to put some faces to the people that we're talking to, because we don't know who's out there, and it's great fun to meet them. And then we met a lot of fur babies, a lot of RVing fur babies. Pretty cute. But it was the stories from the people that we really were appreciative of. Let's listen in. Tell me your name and what does the RV lifestyle mean to you? My name is Ariel and a lot of it is just seeing the country and we I've cross country in a car and it's not the same as actually seeing it and experiencing it. We've got so many beautiful national parks throughout this country that I want to see it in person. And why an RV? You can go into the park and spend several days as opposed to staying at a Marriott or a Hilton outside of the park and having to go in and fight the crowds for parking when you're already inside the national parks. It's actually experiencing it when people have already gone home and going into the park and experiencing the evening and early hours in the morning when the animals are coming out and possibly a bear or a deer coming through the campground. That would be fascinating <laughs> to see. When you spend the night there, like you say, and you wake up in the morning with the first light and the fog and the animals and everything, or the evening, that's I think when the animals because you haven't done this yet. I haven't done this yet. In the evening, that's when you're more apt to have really? the bison come through your campground, and that is so much fun. That is oh, so exciting. See, to that's get what to I want to experience, because right now, I'm in a car, I go in, I go in with the crowds, and then I have to leave before it's sunset with the crowds, and I don't get to stay in the park and experience what it's really like inside the park. You're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly hope so. <laughs> you will. <laughs> Then Mark Hopkins. And Mark, what does the RV lifestyle mean to you? Well, it means right now patience. Patience with ordering one that's just the way you want it. Um, it's home away from home. And it's taking, well, the big backyard approach hey, all the way. Hey, that's pretty cool t-shirt. Show everybody that. Where did you well, get that t-shirt? Uh, I, I found it on your site. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no kidding. <laughs> no, I like that. It looks good on you. Oh. We yeah. gotta make something for Hitch. Yeah, well, Hitch, you need one. Hitch, Hitch is uh, the lifestyle for him is relaxing, no matter where he is. That's the. Yeah. <laughs> now you've had one on order, and you're about ready to get one. I am. What's your first trip gonna be? Uh, well, it'll be a trip to Florida to see family, and I will be vacationing uh, in a in a campsite in a campground in Key West for the month of January. Ken and Barbara Longerway, we currently live in New Mexico looking to relocate. We've had two other motorhomes before, a Class C and a Class A, and we want to go down to a Class B that I can drive and we can visit relatives that are located all over the country and not have to be in a campground because several of them live in places that are nowhere near a campground. Take the cat with us and not have to leave her with a sitter and just have total freedom of, hey, let's go somewhere this weekend and do it. And with the RV lifestyle, we've learned how to uh, take baths, like a Navy shower. We know how to, learn how to uh, minimize the use of water, how we can uh, heat things, uh, heat water without uh, needing a lot of electricity and stuff. So when we uh, have problems at the home, we can revert to our RV lifestyle learning and uh, not lose a beat. Hi, I'm Paul Erickson. Uh, RV lifestyle, gosh, well, we enjoy getting out when we can. We've never spent any time boondocking per se, but we enjoy traveling the country. Uh, earlier this year, we took off from our home in Vancouver, Washington, 
uh, visited family in eastern Washington, northern Idaho, great grandkids in Montana before he we went on to Crazy Horse in order to uh, Nebraska to visit my wife's aunt. Then we swung home through Jackson, Wyoming, where another sister lives, and then on into Idaho Falls, where Idaho, where we're originally from, and back home. So this trip, we're out. To go, we went to Mesa, Arizona, to visit a grandson, and then we came here to Pomona to meet Mike and <laughs> Jennifer and uh, catch up with the road trek people here. So we're headed out later today for Vancouver and home. So what do you do when you're all these places? What do you oh, like about it? Gosh, well, we, well, on this trip we actually stopped and hiked the south rim of the Grand Canyon, which was a lot of fun. And of course when we're like in Montana with the great grandson, they're a hoot. Just to get together with those five little boys, they never stop moving and just trying to keep up with them. And then of course with sisters and brothers, it's just laugh and joke and kid each other yeah. and eat a lot, of course, when you're traveling like that. But do, yeah. you, uh, do you wish you'd started earlier? Well, actually, we started with a tent when our kids were really young. Then we went to a tent trailer and then a Toyota chassis uh, RV, a little coachman. And then we went to a Class C, Jayco, and that's when the grandkids traveled with us a lot to Disneyland, Yellowstone Park. Yeah. So, yeah, we just get out and do anything and everything we can. Uh, we did take the one RV to... Uh, Orlando one time to go to Disney World. So you use it for transportation? Or would you live in it? What do you like? It's, I don't know that we're ready to live in it, so we just like to use it to get from point A to point B to do stuff. And most of that stuff is with a family. But you camp in it, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We just haven't boondocked much. We usually end up in some RV park before we plug in the power and let it go. Well, you got to get our boondocking book. That's why. We, yes, we do. Because we want to try some of that. It's, it's a great way to go. Yeah, I, I believe that. I believe that. So the people who are thinking about the lifestyle, what do you say? Oh, go for it. I mean, you're never too early to start. I mean, goodness gracious, I retired from full-time work nine years ago, or eight, yeah, nine years ago now. And so we get out at least once a month and go somewhere for three days. My name is Gail Geiger. I retired six years ago. Uh, within two months, I went out and bought a, an RV. And I've tried three of them in the last um, six years. And they've all been sprinters. Love the sprinter. Had a Road Trek SS Agile recently. Um, but we like to do backcountry in Death Valley or Brego Springs, or there's always some dirt roads back there. And um, so we, we thought going 4x4. Four four. So you I, got a 4x4? Four four. Yes. Well, you do go back into that. Uh, well, I don't know about the RV, but at least we know it can go there. Yeah. <laughs> what do you like yeah. about the back country? Oh my gosh, um, since we were little kids, we, we would go, our father and parents would take us out in, um, in Jeeps and things out. Uh, back you know way away kind of thing too but now we go with a couple of vehicles together you know with the water and the the tow and the satellite phone and you know all the safety things but death valley is exquisite yes you have to get back uh-huh really yes it's a little hot there isn't it very yeah about november is about the time to start thinking of going really yeah to go in the winter time in the summers. And what about the flowers? What about the snakes and scorpions and things the, like that? Well, the snakes come out in the spring when it gets warm. That's anywhere yeah. in the desert. And But it's um, the springtime in the desert is probably the prettiest place in the world. And uh, you, you'll be on a little road somewhere in the middle of nowhere, and all of a sudden you'll see this gorgeous cactus in bloom all by itself. And you're 23 miles off the main highway, and you, you just, you know, you're just standing there staring at it. It's so yeah, pretty. You know, people hear you talk about that, and they say, oh, Aren't you ever worried about your safety out there? Um, yes, it's a number one thing is water, water, uh, never less than two vehicles. Uh, we have uh, winches, um, extra fuel, and we have satellite phones. And um, so that if you, <clears throat> I, I would urge your listeners, if they, uh, some of the ones that you know you had stories where they got stranded because they didn't have a cell signal, a satellite phone you uh, will pick up a signal anywhere. And uh, we carry one. Uh, in fact, we carry two of them, like as a backup, yeah. so that you could be in the middle of nowhere and you could still dial out yes. and call somebody. It's, it's really a good thing to carry around. Are satellite so, phones very expensive? Yes. I, well, the way iPhones now are now, they're still thousand, twelve hundred dollars or whatever. So a satellite phone would be in that range. The the thing that's most expensive about it is you're paying almost sixty dollars a month not to use it, just to have it. 
So if, if you, it's not a hi honey, hello, how are you phone, and you want to talk for five hours, because <laughs> they charge you by the minute. Yeah. So the whole idea is just to have it, and then if you ever did get in a situation, you'll always have a signal where you can call out. That's great. Uh, my name is Jim Hands. Um, that's my name, and uh, the, it's the road trekking, really. Uh, I stumbled onto your podcast and came to the Pomona RV show about two years ago, met Jim Hamill and the crew, and uh, really liked it. Long story short, we got, got a used 190 Versatile, upgraded to a 210 Popular. We love it. Uh, it's nice to go. It's nice to be able to have that freedom to go where you'd like to go and uh, to go off the beaten path. And uh, and it's it's just been really nice to be together and uh, going seeing family and things like that and being able to get away from family in a quick kind of sometimes we just leave the motor running and uh, we come back out when uh, it gets a little crazy but uh, we really enjoy it and uh, we're looking forward to putting many more miles on it. My name is Mary Lou Young and the RV lifestyle which I've been doing for years means freedom freedom to go where I want, see who I want, visit friends and family, and just have the, the openness of the road, and we take the blue roads instead of the freeways so that we can go on the back roads. And we've been all over, even into Canada, and just absolutely love it. I can't begin to tell you how much fun it is to meet other folks who share your love of the RV lifestyle. You know, sometimes we, we kind of think we're just doing this in a vacuum because we're basically talking to a, a camera or a computer and we forget that there are really people out there. Sometimes we say, oh, nobody's listening to this. And it's really fun to meet these people, isn't it? It was. It was, yeah. it was great. And, and what I really enjoyed about it is uh, the many different ways people are enjoying the RV lifestyle. It's not just, you know, go camp someplace and go home for the weekend. This, so many different ways. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed all of this and we'd love to hear your story someday and what the RV lifestyle means to you. We're Mike and Jennifer Wendland. We want to thank you for watching and would you please do us a big favor and subscribe to our RV lifestyle channel right here on YouTube. Bye bye everybody. Happy trails.